All right, g'day, hi, and welcome. So, I'm gonna head back. Don't have time to put out traps today, it's too late in the day. Look at this nice rifle, I'm just gonna take it. Make sure that's all good. Okay, today's uh, video, which I got a couple of videos out today, but um, right to trap. Um, you got, you know, trapping being the controversial topic that it is, uh, one of the things about it is the right to trap. Now, here in Canada, uh, you every province has their rules and regulations. And what the right to trap is, is basically that even though people may have issue or oppose it, you have the right to partake lawfully in that, if you want to call it a sport, conservation, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. You have the lawful right to do that and anybody that interferes with that right is subject to uh, penalties of law right so in other words somebody comes and destroys your trap line you can uh, you, you got legal protections so to deal with that tomorrow um, so it's very important that when we're learning what our rights are to trap uh, that we look at all the legal regulations there like that and we comply and stuff like that but one of the things that even though you it's your right to trap uh it's your duty not to antagonize um there it's not exactly how they say it but basically they're saying you know like don't be uh putting a bad light on trappers like you know like, don't take your like carcasses and strap them to your rooftops now years ago it was you know uh hunting season for example somebody would get a deer or whatever and they would drive you know in a big rack or whatever and all bloody and they'd put the head on the on the hood of the car and strap it down and drive around for a week with it and that used to upset a lot of people right so then they came up with the laws where you have to cover it which I agree with and I don't agree with I agree with it in the sense that these people were doing it on purpose to you know to piss people off they you know they weren't just hey check out my my uh, deer that I got you know they, they had to you know they had to make sure there was blood smeared all over the place and stuff like that and you always get that guy that that's always trying to you know uh, use it as a as a wedge tool you know like just to you know i hunt so and i'm gonna and i'm gonna wave it in front of the you know my the carcasses in front of an, of an animal activist whatever but all it ever did is get more restrictions right so you have to promote it in a good light and that's why i do these type of videos um one channel i'm kind of addicted to right now i i knew about this guy's channel for a while but i is uh his name is andrew stanley and he's up in northwest territories and he has the wild north channel or wild north channel and i was watching uh fur harvesters auction did a uh like a a, a, a kind of like a, a series with him on you know the life of a trapper and that guy's really well set up and stuff like that and you can see what you know like the work the guy puts in is just astronomical like he like me i'm a hack i'm just you know you know jumped into it uh, again after a while but if i was really set up yeah you could do what he's doing and i think he's a good ambassador for uh the uh I don't want to call it a sport, even though they might classify it as a, a you know outdoorsman sport. It's not really a sport. It's it's much more than that. Uh, sport, you know, I mean, there's no score here. You know, I mean, there's no tally. Uh, you're doing it for more than just, you know, I got something. You know what I mean? Like you're doing it for conservation reasons. You're also every time you go out into the bush, something teaches you something. You know what I mean? Like you're just, it, it, it gives you a lot. It gives you a lot more than just a bunch of furs and stuff like that. So we have the right to trap, but I think we have the duty to promote it properly. And I think that's been the problem for trappers for years is we have a lot of industry that's against this type of stuff, which I know a lot of it's hypocritical. You know, your animal activists, they go to the rally and then they go and eat at McDonald's right after. I, I get that. But the point is, is optics, I hate to use the term, but optics is a big thing. So I've had people in my past uh, channel, uh, you know, comment things like, well, uh, I find the videos interesting. I'm not for trapping, but, uh, 
you know, uh, you seem to be doing it quite well. I'm just going to take a quick scout. And you, you've been, you know, promoting it quite well and all that. And I'm learning stuff. So only about a month or so later saying, well, I now, you know, see that it's not exactly how it's been promoted from the negative side. The negative side shows you uh, Greenpeace are horrible for this. I'm not saying they all do it. Uh, and of course, PETA is really horrible for this. But, you know, you've got these people that don't understand how it works because number one they get bad propaganda so what they'll do is they'll take an outer regulation trap and they'll torture an animal with it on video and then tell you that some trapper did this and if you're a trapper you look at it and say well if that was a trapper that did that obviously that person doesn't know how to trap uh, or whatever and there are bad trappers out there I'm not, I'm not saying we're all saints or innocent or like that uh, and there's just some people that are just ignorant they don't know their traps are not effective or whatever but i heard a great thing uh on the wild north channel and i thought this was really really good that efficient trapping is ethical trapping meaning if you could take the animal with the minimal amount of suffer do them in quickly you know if you're going to kill it kill it uh and you know by being efficient the animal suffers less therefore you know you're being more humane and more respectful to, to the environment and you know easier on the animal i mean you are killing something at the end of the day but how you do it makes a big difference i mean to knock an animal out in a 330 con bear and then to either break his neck instantaneously killing him or whatever uh, the power of those traps those traps the killing traps are very very effective and by setting them up properly you almost get an instant kill each time and because of that what you learn from that is that if you hone in on that kind of skill set you can show people that no see how that guy what they're promoting over there this is what it looks like in real life and it's nothing like that so somebody did that uh years ago back in the 70s or 80s I think it was a Greenpeace or whatever, and I'm not dissing the whole organization because there are some things that they do that I like, but for the most part, it's got like everything, it's been saturated with SJWs, and SJWs are ideological religious zealots, they're not really uh you know, they're not really activists when you really look at because they don't you know they, they, they don't even hold an argument whatever but you know it is what it is but the thing is is that we can't reach those people because they're already too far gone but you might be able to reach other people and what they were doing back in the 1980s is they were getting the paying these guys to go be as brutal with the uh, baby seals and they were just randomly clubbing them right now i mean i'm not even a sealer i've never been i've never seen a uh, well, maybe I did see a seal at a zoo once, but you know what I mean? I, I don't even, you know, you know what I mean? Like I've never, I'm never going to see a seal around here. And even I could tell like, that, okay, that's not, that's not a, that's not a whaler or seer, seal, a seal hunter at all. Like, I mean, like they don't do it like that. And those guys, they can kill a seal extremely quickly. Is it bloody? Yeah, because they have a spike on it. But the idea is that it blunt force trauma plus the spike kills the animal really really effectively they only have to hit him once when the guy knows what he's doing they hit him once the seal's dead he doesn't even know he's dead you know what i mean uh, that's pretty efficient it's just as gory but when you show these other guys beating up on a on an animal and torturing it right because the cause right uh to me that that really ruins their cause because it's like once it gets exposed it's like uh, with the uh, dying polar bears right now which there's more polar bears than there's ever been not around here but <laughs> if they keep populating the way they are they might be you know what i mean and uh they you know they always take like they'll, they'll take a polar bear everybody's seen that polar bear with the mange and saying oh this because of global warming this polar, polar bear is dying and it's like no, that, that polar bear is dying of mange. And it's not uncommon what was happening to that bear. I mean, it happens. It's just, a, you know, a cycle of nature. But until you explain that to people, they believe it's global warming killing the, the bears, right? So, uh, so you have that propaganda to counter. Like almost everything else right now, like propaganda is just, it's insane everywhere, right? But here's the good news. Here's the thing. When you do it ethically and you do it the right way, 
when people find out that the other side is lying, they don't listen to them anymore. They listen to you. Now you have a captive audience. So now you have to hold that standard up of right to trap. This is why we do it. Here's what you're going to see. And when I get up around this corner, you're probably, I'm going to be, hopefully have enough battery and memory today to show you something, or at least you might hear something pretty spectacular. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that because I, I want to preserve my battery today because I always run out when I get here. And this is, I've been wanting to show you this now for three or four days. But there we go.